Do you trust me? Let's go. <laughs> I don't really understand why there isn't that much money anymore. I only really understand that people haven't got much money and they're all losing their jobs. Is that the recession? I know, that's why we had to come out, darling. <laughs> Never do this again! <laughs> our mum starts crying and our dad keeps on shouting and so does our mum because they're really stressed and angry because they've actually lost their job. They're just around all the time. And, like, you know they're not working. And, like, everybody says, why isn't your dad not at work? And I say, and I have to, like, explain it all. In the heart of the commuter belt, 30 miles west of London, Hannah's family is adjusting to life without work. Today we are going to find out about people who help us. Very good. Right, we'll leave it there because you've got spelling to do as well. Paul. Paul or Artra. Andy and Jackie both used to be employed by a computer printer company, but in February it went bust, leaving them both jobless. After working for the company for 20 years, most recently as European sales manager, Andy wanted to say a very personal farewell to his clients. I write to you now to advise that, as of today, I'm no longer working for Telegenicom. It's been a great pleasure and privilege for me to have worked with you. The It's been a great pleasure and privilege for me to have worked with you. The kindness. Oh. <laughs> Can't say it. The kindness, hospitality, and friendship that you've shown me has been fantastic. I wish I could have returned it as much. I wish you well for the future and hope our paths may cross again one day. But whatever happens, you'll always be in my memories. <laughs> Both Andy and I had worked in the um, computer printer business since, um, well, for me, since um, about 1979. And so, you know, it was just, it, it didn't feel real. We don't tell people about mummy and daddy losing their jobs because they'll just tell their mums and then mum will get embarrassed. I need to phone Claire and thank her for taking you to the park yesterday. That was lovely. Oh, yeah, yeah. So but you could I get some peace and quiet for the... What is it called? The... The CV. Yeah, the CV. The CV. What does it stand for? Curriculum Vitae. Curriculum Feline. Because the company was declared bankrupt, the couple did not receive any redundancy payment, though Andy was at least able to claim the equivalent of around 10 weeks' pay from the National Insurance Scheme. I've got to go to the job centre. But after three months of unemployment, the family are now eating into their savings and still struggling to sort out their unemployment benefit. It says that they can't pay the job seekers allowance. We cannot pay you because you have not paid or credited with enough <coughs> Class 1 national insurance contributions. I phoned this number on the top and he said, well, why didn't you do a joint claim? But that won't give you the same amount of money anyway, would it? But maybe that's what we'll have to do then. You need to phone that guy. Yeah, yeah, you know, phone James. Well, you know, you need to push, you need to get an interview, because I'm yes. sure that if you... Yes, yes, I'll do that, yeah, I'll... Uh, get in front of him. Yeah, 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 I'll do that now. All right, then. All right. Bye then, sweetheart, I'll see you in a minute. Be good. Where is Mummy going, anyway? Mummy's going down to the job centre. She's signing on. Last night, we had a bit, a bit of a to-do, because this job that seems a really good job um, for Andy, um, he's not going to get a telephone interview until he's done a new CV. Oh, hello. 
I've resisted getting a CV done professionally, but just wanted to double check the sort of um, the, the costs uh, involved. Okay, okay. Um, you, did you say that was plus fat? Cheers, then. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, only five hundred pounds. So we spent the whole of Bank Holiday Monday when the weather was beautiful, sitting in front of a PC, trying to think up words to put on a new CV. Sandy Voller here. It was regarding that um, uh, opportunity. Um, not, um, um, uh, not, not, a, not a formal educational qualification, no. No. Yeah, OK. Um, well, thanks for the opportunity, and uh, as far as it went... Oh, great. There you go. Another door slams in the face. <laughs> uh. Hello! Hi! Well, you never believe. After all of that, all of this time today, waiting and waiting and waiting, and I've had to sign off. Because you said, well, there's no point in you signing on because we're not going to pay you anyway. Have you phoned that guy about the job? Oh. Yeah. Well, now what? <clears throat> uh, there's somebody else in the running who's got some technical oh, quali no. qualification. Yeah. Are you not going to get an interview then? No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. All that, All that time and effort and emotion and... Oh, I felt so positive about that one. Yeah. Oh, Andy. <laughs> Back to square one again. Yeah. <sighs> I'm coming down. Like Andy and Jackie, Paul and his wife Elmer have both lost their jobs. For over 20 years, they've worked at Visteon, a car parts factory in North London. But two days ago, the company called in the receivers. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It's all right. So far, so good. Found a good little place underneath a shelf and they've blocked the lights, you know. When the Vistion workers were told that they'd not only lost their jobs, but also their redundancy package and their pensions, some of them occupied the plant. They want Ford, their original employer, to pay them their full redundancy. But the administrators have gone to court to have everyone evicted from the site. This is so wrong. They're making criminals out of flipping, you know, out of not normal people. You know, all of a sudden you're a criminal. What well, mind? You're sitting in a place where they owe you money. Oh, no. They say you've got to see your children through Jail. bars. Could be real bars soon. Are you sleeping here again? Yes, darling. Oh. I don't know when I'm coming back. The eldest keeps saying, I'm scared we're going to lose our house. I don't want to lose our house. Where are we going to live? You know, and I think that's a heavy weight to carry. And it's like, look, it hasn't gone that far yet. You know, it's still early days yet, you know. My mum says like she has watery eyes, like when, when she cries, she hides. So um, I know she's crying because she likes to get a different coloured face. You work all your life and they just throw you out like a dog. I had 21 years of pension invested in there and Paul had 24 and a half. And we, we came out with nothing. And these people that I've grown old with, you know? Because we all started when we was in our 20s and we're all in our 40s. And I think it's a good thing. It's about time we made a stand. I just want a redundancy package like Ford's have got, because that would help a lot. Paul and Elmer's friends, Dave and his wife Claire, have also both lost their jobs. 
I've got to say, when, I, when I'm here, I feel better, because like, this is all familiar to me, you know? My wife, she's the same. She's, she's at home, because one of us has got to stay at home and look yeah. after the kids. Two weeks ago, she envisioned this happening, the closing down. And she applied for, what, 20 different jobs. She was telling me that every job you, she applied for, there's like 30 or 40 people applying for it. So the chances of me getting a job, who is on skill, it's oh, even less. I don't even want to think about it. You, you know? are, you've got a bit of skill. I just hope I wake up tomorrow and it's just a dream. Mm. Really. It's like it's like someone's died. It yeah. really is. It's, it's that feeling. It's yeah. that, you know, like you carry on and then all of a sudden you get that, you know, yeah. and you just realise that it's, <laughs> you know. I for work at 10 o'clock as usual. At quarter past 10 I received a phone call from the HR department and by quarter to 11 I was out the door. Uh, and that was it. Stunned, disappointed, angry, insulted and confused. After three decades in journalism, Derek has today been told by the leading Scottish newspaper, The Daily Record, that his services are no longer required. It's going to be strange not being a part of Glasgow, really. It's, although I don't live here, I was born here, and you feel like, you feel like a resident when you work here every, every day and for as many years, and it's... it's it's quite an emotional moment, I have to say. It's, it's quite emotional. Came this morning, it's my official notice of redundancy. There's a sentence nobody ever wants to see. Your P45 will be sent to you in due course. I mean, I've read it, I've written stories before, people getting made mm -hmm. redundant. I've mm -hmm. seen people leaving factories like Caterpillar for the last time. Seen looking out of Ravenscraig after Ravenscraig closed. It doesn't really strike home until it happens to you. No, yeah. no. It's something, it's something that happens to other people, yeah. it's not something that mm -hmm. happens to you, mm -hmm. but... Oh yes, it does. I have a yeah, feeling that it'll, it'll be okay. <laughs> well, it's going to have to be, I mean, mm -hmm. one way or another, it's going to have to be. My wife said to me in bed, she said, you know, you could look on this as a, a big adventure. So I replied, well, yeah, you could, but why don't you just turn around, shut up and go to sleep? <laughs> so I'm not quite at the stage of seeing it as an adventure. But she's, she's a very positive. Can we just take a wee break for a sec, uh, please, if you don't mind? Today I signed on for a job seekers allowance because after all that's that's what I am now. I'm a job seeker. And at the moment I've I've looked everywhere. I've been online, I've been looking at adverts, all sorts of places for jobs and in my line of work as a journalist there just aren't any jobs out there because it's shrinking, it's an industry that's not hiring at the moment. Hi dear. Hello there. Uh, I've got an appointment here. What's your name? Derek Masterton. Okay. Derek. I'm not looking forward to getting into the job centre, put it like that. I suppose it's almost like an admission of defeat, really. I failed to hang on to my job and now I'm here. I can't find a job elsewhere. Can you help me to find something? Do you want to stay in the same line of work? Would you like to change? What, what have you been your thoughts there? I'm open to everything and anything, right. effectively. Now, what we can do, and so just go to here, we can look at it by sector and we can look at it by area. So for, if we just put in journalist to start with, Gosh knows when we'd have had a journalist, I don't know. So we don't have any no. in this area. 
but we would probably need to take that a bit further afield. So that's taking it into the Glasgow area and mm -hmm. having a look again. Not anything there either, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So, so basically, a lot of it is is websites looking at websites. A lot of it you will do from home. You know, mm -hmm. you will just yeah. be able to go into your, your your computer and do an awful lot of it there. It's not like the old days of the Labour Exchange with the not big the shoes going down the street. No, no, no. Like that. no we've moved on a little bit since then. So I'll just get this for you. These um, information from. Right. The, the photocopier, OK? Thanks very much. <laughs> 1,359 new jobs. Try that. I never, ever thought it'd be this hard to find a job. In the 80s, it was bad, but... This everywhere you look, there's, there's nowhere to go now, there's no London, there's no nothing. Gary lost his job in the building industry over four months ago. He lives in Saltburn in Cleveland with his wife Michelle, who's also out of work, and their two daughters. Gary's been jobless before, but never for this long. Financially it's absolutely crippling. It's, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. At the start of it you can juggle. But Peter seems to be getting further away now and he's getting harder to catch. And Paul just seems to be wanting pain all the time. The way I see it is if we lose the house, we lose the house. And worrying about it isn't going to make any difference. If one bill does get paid every month, it's going to be the mortgage. We'll sit with a candle. But I'm not going to lose this house. I sold all the candles on the car boot sale. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting in the dark then. <laughs> We don't really care that we haven't got enough money because we understand. We've got friends to play with. We've got friends who live on our street who go to our schools. We've got friends to play with and I've got my room and I've got all my books and stuff like that to read. So we don't really mind. She has good listening skills. Have you? You don't listen to me. I don't listen to you. I have enjoyed reading her poetry. It's good, isn't it? in which she uses language creatively and imaginatively. I look forward to reading more as she progresses throughout the school. Well done. And guess what? If I had a job, I'd give you a pound. So do an Ollie instead. <laughs> I have got quite a lot of money and I do let my dad use it because he would need it when things come along. I've got a one pence from Jersey and a 20 pence from the other bank. If he needs something in the car, I give him about 10p. Because I've got all different ones, like all different 50p's and all different 10 pences. Oh, bank! I've called you, you've called me about 30 times since Wednesday. Can you definitely do that this time? Because about 20 times now it's been, been... Right, just hang up on you. Then they wonder why. You get behind. It gets a bit annoying that they keep phoning us because they keep phoning us for no reason. Just ask for money and more money and more money and money that we don't have. Bank again. What's three minutes later? Andre, can we Davis there, please? Uh, speaking, please. Yeah, just a place on back and call, Mr. Davis. I'm in fact, the call, I have a circle to you, Mark. Sorry? Halifax again. Checked out the system, that's what they said last time, what, three minutes ago? Now that will probably another, say, ten times before nine o'clock, probably tonight. Either he hangs up on them or they hang up on him. Just get. Because I think they get a bit fed up of ringing him and stuff like that, but. That's all I really know. That's clusters, we've spoken to you. It's just a, uh, so frustrating with them. Did you get the kids' uniforms then? No, I've had a complete nightmare with them. Why? Because I went to the shop to try and get them and um, handed over my card. And my card was declined, but I knew that I had money in because I'd just got my child benefit. So I went to the hole in the wall and it ate my card. It ate your card? It took my card off me. So I have to get into Barclays and get the child benefit paid in to them instead. It's just, everything's just getting net up in it. They even their karate took 150, it's only, but it's 750 a week, isn't it? Well, she's paid that herself, eh? 
Over pocket money? Over savings? Yeah, but I've got an IOU for you back in the paper. Yeah, I've got to put an IOU in a box till I get a job. <laughs> So is Daddy. Daddy keeps on losing his temper because he's been sleeping there almost two weeks now. If he sleeps there next week, I'm just going to go in there and get him out because I miss my Daddy so much. In North London, the occupation of the Visteon factory is continuing, despite legal moves by the administrators to take those inside the plant to court. Paul is committed to the struggle to get full redundancy, but is also thinking about being in the job market again for the first time since he left school. But did you do any vocational training like when you're here? Yeah, done loads, done loads. You want to list all of it, yeah. all of that, list it. How yeah, did you do it? Like, can you give me some like bullet points, like headlines? You're just like, starting off with your name and your number and your email address. Have you got an email address? And list, but not just like yeah. practical skills, list other stuff. Yeah, I went, I went to a night school as well and done like electrical qualifications Actually, and everything, so. It might be better to do that in there, because that's oh, yeah. related to your jobs. OK. Support the Vistian workers. There's no jobs like there. You reach 50 and you get made redundant. You know, it's a hard to explain. I never thought I would experience it. Watching on TV is, you say, you feel sorry yeah. for them, but it's like one of those things. It would never happen to me. That's what you think. It's happening. <laughs> it's happened. But go to the um, job centre on Tuesday and they just sort of go through what we have to do and how we get our benefits and that. Which I think we're going to get about £100 a week between the two of us. So I'll be robbing the kids' piggy banks. I'm not joking. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah, lend us some money. Good. Union convener Kevin Nolan has been at the Royal Courts of Justice all day, fighting the eviction order. They wanted to put myself and Piers in jail and take over the plant, repossess the plant. Uh, the union's legal team put up a fantastic defence for me and Piers, and we have got until Thursday, 12 o'clock, after the meetings in America, for the Vistion top bosses to demand to give us what they owe us. And they owe us. Yeah. Right? And we're going to get that. Right? Well, welcome. Good afternoon, Springboard, um, Bracknell. The subject today, as you see there, is CVs. <clears throat> OK. Good afternoon. My name's Andy Voller. I'm a sales professional in the IT printer industry. I've uh, been working there for more than 20 years. I'm now seeking a, a comparable role in a business-to-business -business environment. Well, this week's been a good week. Um, the uh, <clears throat> networking has... Um, kicked in and there's potentially three, um, three jobs that um, I'm pursuing. We wait with bated breath uh, for developments next week. Andy goes to an executive job club to keep his employment search fresh. Meanwhile, Jackie is dreaming of becoming self-employed, but only once Andy is securely back in a job. I had this crazy idea a few years ago to perhaps set up my own company but I feel that I can't really do that until we get sorted out and Andy's settled and we're back on track. Hello! What was it like? It's quite interesting. Useful? Yeah, I think it's always useful, but um, this time you know, we're talking about CVs. So, you know, what is it that I need to do to even get interviews? Mm. Well, we went through the options, really. Is it the CV or is it me? We actually eliminated me 
because one of the guys said, look, they haven't even met you, so it can't be you. Yeah. <laughs> the fun, most frustrating thing is not to get an interview, not to even be yeah, able to the put you... And that's, well, that's uh, the, having, the hardest thing at the moment. Yeah, you're quite right. With only statutory redundancy and their benefits not yet coming through, Jackie and Andy are still living off their savings, so a summer holiday is out of the question. But Jackie's brother has offered to let them borrow his boat for a few days, as long as Andy learns the ropes. So how have you been getting on then, with looking for a job? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what else I can do now. <laughs> uh. Here we go, Lucy, you can be the pitch pipe, the recorder blower. Meanwhile, Jackie's dream of her own business, which she's called Occasions, is moving closer. Her first engagement is to provide music for a funeral. They've asked for a group of people to sing in the congregation to swell the singing. So we're going to have to just see how it goes. I mean, every day you're thinking about jobs. You go over things at night, you know, dropping off to sleep and uh, these sort of things are ticking over your mind. It's there the whole time. You never get away from it. <clears throat> there were two opportunities coming out of the old company. Yeah. But um, there wasn't a role for me. It was just the inner circle. Nice. Yeah. But and suddenly, you know, nobody's talking to you. Yeah. And it's really weird. It's very disappointing as well. You know, you work with people for 20 odd years and they, and they can't even talk to you face to face. There you go. Hello! You are right. Made it! I went the wrong way. <laughs> it was a celebration of life, so I don't know if it would be different if it was like a young person. But, you know, I was obviously nervous because I wanted it to go really right. well. Yeah. But I quite enjoyed doing it. And then I thought, well, crikey, you know, weddings. We could offer bands for weddings. Mm. Um, then the funeral the director who hired me said, we think we can put lots of work your way. I'm phone him up now. Yeah. yeah. yeah three in a day, like and you won't have to find a job. <laughs> yeah. If this yeah. takes off, you won't have to work because you'll be ha we'll be running our own business. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So what are you going to get him to do? Chauffeur? Well, I don't know. He yeah. could do all the catering. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. The High Court has ruled that the factory occupation in North London is illegal. The former Vistion workers must leave the roof for the last time. Hopefully a year from now we'll all be laughing about this. They offer me a job. £5.80 an hour. £5.80? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And I'm supposed to give them a call, but I haven't. I had a phone call from the job centre and it was uh, £7 an hour. £7 an hour? Yeah, which is half of what I was earning. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. It's rubbish. It's, the thought of working is good, but the thought of working for that is not good. I want to try and keep to my level because if you go lower, they expect you to take lower yeah. and you're off their books. Yeah. You know, so once, once you have got a job, you're off their books though. Yeah, so I'm tempted, but I want to try and keep to my skill level, yeah. you know, because like, I feel like you're just going to be eroding it away, you know, and um, so I don't think there's any pressure at this moment to do it. Oh. Yesterday in America, there was obviously a meeting with the senior executives. They've agreed to come over here on um, Tuesday, uh, where the negotiations will open up. We are, I believe, talking about money. Now, I don't know the size of the money, I don't know anything else. Now, I, I see it as a, a victory with a small V at this moment in time. We've still got to keep the pressure on the company and the negotiators from the other side over the next few days. We will be leaving this building at 12 o'clock. I know not everyone agrees with that, but our hands are going to be totally clean in all this. Justice!
Yeah, yeah, okay, baby, you're right. I'm coming round. Hey. Oh, darling. It's all right, girls. It's all right. It's all right. Come here, baby. It's all right. It's all right. Well, everyone's here for us, boy. Everyone's here for us. Everyone's here for us. You haven't done it. They said this tonight. If you stay there here tonight, you'll get arrested. I know. That's why we had to come out, darling. That's why we had to come out. It's all right. We're all right. Never do this again! No, no. In Scotland, Derek has decided to escape the stresses of job hunting by taking a break on the Isle of Isla. The past month has been probably one of the most hectic and traumatic and upsetting and strange and bizarre and weirdest phases of life that I've known, but coming here, it's, it's, you just feel the weight dropping away. But at the moment, we don't really have very many fish. Mind you, I always say there's a lot more to fishing than catching fish. Oh, well, certainly in our case. <laughs> there has to be. <laughs> So it's a feeling of rejection. Why don't they want me? You know, what have I done that's so wrong over the years? And it knocks your confidence. But of course, when you do sink into depression, it's not that easy. I mean, I, I have been there and you lose all sense of self-value, self-worth, self-respect. And it's essentially drifting into a, a huge chasm of, of feeling bad about yourself until you eventually reach the conclusion that the world would probably be better off without you. Difficult to come to terms with, I know. It just, I know it, just, it just all seems such a scary kind of... Mm -hmm. oh, ho, ho. oh, good fish. Should we keep that for someone? No. <laughs> there we go. And he's off. Derek has struggled with depression before and is keenly aware of the links between joblessness and mental health. There we go. In you go. Research has shown that within just five weeks, those who lose their jobs can start to experience low self-esteem, anxiety, depression and insomnia. So listen, you're looking for a barman. Hey, you got a vacancy for a barman? Hey, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a wee taste of black bomoda. Oh, this is a... Oh, 250 oh, pounds oh, a dram. No, this makes it all worthwhile. Look at that. Never to be forgotten. Oh, this is here goes, here goes. Oh, oh no, I tell you, this is... 42 year old. Mm. It's my turn now. Uh, oh, that is gorgeous. That is... Oh, oh, thank you, Duffy. Thank you. One now, you clock. Very last one. <laughs> Twenty one, two, three. Because <laughs> 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 my dad's so stressed lately because he hasn't got a job. Then it, it's really nice for him if me if me and Chloe don't argue. So. We try to, but it doesn't really go that well, uh, most of the time. I think it would be easier for people if they had a job, because he shouts so much and he just, he gets, if we're naughty sometimes, then he gets more angry than us, with us than he usually would, but he's trying to keep himself ca calm and I think he's doing well, so I just hope he gets a job. Rain, 
the outside. In, now. <laughs> Get in, now. Right, they're not going anywhere. Yo, in your house. Good boy. Get in. Leah, right. what? Leo, when you ask me to do something, if you can do something, I say no. We no, what no means no. Day. Get in. Like the first time I met Gary, he was the funniest person I'd ever met. And now we just don't laugh anymore. Not like we used to. Because he hasn't got his stories to tell and he isn't doing anything, he's just sit, sit, sitting in the house, miserable all day. So that's the main thing that's changed. We see too much of each other, it's, irritate each other. It's just drove a big wedge between the pair of us, really. To 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in each other's faces. It's just, it's, it's took it as far as it can take it, actually. We can't get much further apart the way we're going. We're just like friends now, aren't we? Yeah, it's absolutely destroying my daddy's he said to me last night, I've never been out of work, so I don't know what you're going through, son. And he hasn't. Neither of you until now. I know. It's a strange feeling. Not getting up. Uh. <laughs> 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 oh, God. You've got it out of your pocket. Oh. <laughs> Dog poo. <laughs> I thought it was a stone. <laughs> That's just about how your look's been going, isn't, isn't it? it? Just, just can't even pick a stone up without getting shit on my fingers. I've lived in such a cocoon in this life so far, backwards and forwards to work, literally a mile to work. You didn't even, you know, didn't even hit traffic. It was just so cocooned. <laughs> I, I am scared for the future. I don't know what it holds. It'll never be the same as, you know, us both working there. We'll never have that life again. It weren't, you know, it wasn't like, oh, it was an elaborate life, but it was a stable life. Um, so quite comfortable. I'd work around the clock so Emma might not see me, you know. And now we're just there together. There's nowhere to go, there's no money to do it with, and we are on top of each other, so we take it on each other. <laughs> and the mortgage people don't want to know, do they? No, I've got to phone them back up again, cos or go to the citizens' advice. We can't get free school meals cos we haven't got this form. So Can when we phone... Tax, we can't get it until we've got, got this got form. form. And it's just taking forever. They're of no help, are they? They just fob you off. You're just another sadistic. It will get better, Elma. Just not today. It's a slow process. It really is. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm, starting, I'm starting to realise that nothing's. It's like you were living door. like by a certain means, and you've gone from that to that. It's horrible. We took the, the way we were living, we took it all for granted. We just assumed that the future was secured. But I've got to accept, um, I haven't got that job anymore. I've got to put that behind me, you know. There's no jobs in injection mouldings. There's hardly anything in manufacturing anymore in this country anyway. So I've got to start something new. I've got to try something new. I feel sorry for Claire as well. Because, I mean, she's 12 years younger than me. That's what happens when you marry an old man, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that is the original 25-page form for council tax benefit. It's a hefty form. We're raiding the penny jars now. <laughs> you got your coats, girls? Elma, come on. All oh, right, sorry. Make sure everything's all right. Come on, boys, back up. Where are we going? We're going to the unemployment place to sign on. The job centre's asked me to provide all my savings, but they've not asked me anything about what's going out of the house. They're I not in, know. They're not interested in that bit. Well, that's the bit you that know, counts, isn't That's it? the bit where, like, things don't meet in the middle, sort of thing. I think they say they could give you emergency loan. I don't want a loan, thanks. 
don't expect too much because I'm, I'm not. expecting nothing, Kilma. <laughs> exactly, and that's what you're going to get. <laughs> do you know, I forgot to brush my teeth, so I can't even think to do the normal things. <laughs> that's so stress. Mm. Just want to get back to normality. Really. Normality. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like Andy and Jackie, both couples are advised they should make joint claims rather than two single claims. This means Elmer and Claire don't have to sign on every week, but they are not counted as being available for work. They didn't know if it was joint or it was, or whether we should claim separate or... Even now I'm still a little bit confused. I think they're going to do, um, they're having me as a partner, so it's Paul. So I don't have to look for work, basically, with the kids. I'm just, like, secondary, like, you know. They're not even pushing for me to get a job or anything, like, so... You're one of them people now, aren't you? It's horrible to say that. I don't mean any offence to anyone by that, sorry. But, you know... When you've always worked and contributed to everything, you know... Things are quiet and there's nothing doing. The phone's not ringing. I'm looking for, for stories and there's, there's not terribly much in the go. It's the summer months are always known as the silly season in, in journalism and it's not a time which is very good for freelancers. And then when you apply for, for jobs or look for jobs and there's not very much on the jobs front available at the moment either. Uh, in fact, there are fewer and fewer jobs becoming available and more and more people uh, being made redundant through closures. But uh, there are all sorts of other things to be done as well. I mean, hoovering, dusting, not really trusted with the, the ironing. Not since I phoned my wife up one day and asked her if there was a specific way they iron tights. But after almost four months of unemployment, Derek has spotted a vacancy at his local council for a press officer, a role he feels ideally suited for. I wouldn't say I'm confident of getting this job, but I'm hopeful because I tick all the boxes for the qualification, experience, media knowledge, but uh, well, I'll never get the job unless I send the application, which I've now read, checked, there it goes. So we done and dusted. Uh. He's lost his job and we all know that and he's upset and we all know that as well. But he needs to like be with us because it gets stressful for him when he's always looking on that job, on the job, and it's like watching TV all day. You get grumpy, and it's like that with computers. Last week has been um, fairly difficult. Um, you know, the frustration was just building up that there there wasn't anything happening. You know, <laughs> my wife will tell you, Jackie will tell you how grouchy I was getting. On um, Friday, we had a really bad day, and it ended up with me thinking, oh, I need to scrap this occasion's idea. I need to go and get a proper job, um, because there wasn't anything coming from, from his side. And what I should have done at the very beginning is go and get a, a job. Um, to see us through and not worry about, oh, you know, is it right that I'm doing the job and then is at home looking after the kids? I should have done that. But at the time, you don't know it's going to go on for so long. But things are finally looking up for Andy. Well, tomorrow I've got an interview. So having a nice crispy shirt um, helps you feel the part um, and dressing up in a, uh, a suit which I haven't done much in the last six months. <laughs> this is the first interview, which is right up my street. It's in my field. It's a printer manufacturer. Um, and, uh, oh dear, 
just thinking anything. You know, after six months of nothing, and then uh, it's it's just fabulous. <laughs> oh, I'm filling up now. Six months of nothing, and now. <laughs> It must be really hard to be rejected by so many times and what's happened with the old company as well. I think getting, getting that call uh, kind of justifies everything that I have been doing and um, uh, means that I do have a worth, you know, I have got a value to somebody. You know, obviously nothing's been put in writing but if everything goes well, I think we, you know, we can go down the track that this is what we're going to do and, you know, I can get on with the occasions side, which is very exciting too. Which one to wear? Oh dear, conservative. Oh, hi John, it's Jackie Voller. John, I'm after a huge favour. I'm embarking on a new direction. <laughs> I wanted to put a couple of songs on a CD, so, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I've written out a load of questions. Got copies of the CV in case they haven't. Oh, well. Good luck. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, son. We are getting two or three bookings a week and it's, it's becoming quite a, a good business. The best thing that could happen would be to say, yep, OK, start next week. Um, but I'll settle, I'll settle for a second interview where there is an opportunity, then you really do have to go that extra mile. Let nothing come in your way. Santa Maria. There aren't that many people who would qualify in the UK, quite honestly, in that product set. Maria. Yes, I'm pretty optimistic. Pretty optimistic. At the risk of it all going wrong still, I think unless I really screw up, I think it's going to be 80% plus. It's not a done deal, but it's not too far off, I think. Amen. Well, I've got my second interview today for the United Glass at Harlow, and uh, I found out yesterday that Ford are talking to our union and it looks like they're going to be making some cash offers. So today's got the potential of being a very, very good day. I can't count my chickens before the hatch, but whatever happens, we'll get better than we was going to get from the government, you know, so fantastic. I won't allow myself to think ahead, you know because it's just more, it's just a, a big blow when it doesn't work out, so it's best not to think that far ahead. But it could be a double whammy if Paul gets a job today as well. It'd be great, wouldn't it? So we'll see. Hi. We get there. We'll be fine, OK? Yep. When my dad gets a phone call, I do actually hope that it is a job because he wants a job and he's getting more bored by the day. He, especially when when he gets phone uh, phone calls and he thinks he thinks they're going to be a job, but it turns out they're just Halifax or something or Barclay Card. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. I'm available now, yeah. 
Boots size uh, as regular boots are size ten, but any other ones ten now. So put eleven down with the big. Uh, put size eleven, yeah. Hello. Oh, excellent. Hello. Brilliant. Okay then. Cheers, thanks. I'll, I'll send them off now anyway. Okay, cheers. <gasps> Size. So when are you starting? The end of the month. Did you send your CV to them? Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, when I'm sat in that helicopter going on the rig, I'll start getting excited. I'm sick of sending things up. And... <laughs> so what's the money? Well, I think what John said was uh, twenty-four pounds an hour. <laughs> so how definite is this? I don't know. I'm not going to say it's definite because. I've got a kick me in the bollocks on it lately. The 14th? It's only a week away then. Two weeks. Daddy! Oh, it's here, is he? Dada! I don't know, I can't read him. Peanut! <clears throat> How'd you get on? Uh, Did you been... not get it? <laughs> um, well, he went straight for the jugular. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> yeah. So when were you last working in the UK directly? Your level of um, you know, skills and your role you know, is more senior than we're looking for. So uh, you know, I tried to use the, uh, the argument that the fundamental skills involved apply anywhere you know, it's relationships. So he didn't say you're through to the next no. thing or anything? No. No, I said, I asked the question, you know, what is the next stage? And uh, he said, well, you know, they've been looking at a lot of people over the last couple of weeks. Oh, that doesn't sound so, good, does it? Um, as soon as they say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, he didn't look me in the eye when we said cheerio. Mm. I kind of had an idea that I was kind of going there to have a job offer, but to actually someone say offer you a job, it just, you know, it just um, makes me feel fantastic, you know. I've done what I set out to do, you know, I've, I've got the job that I needed, and um, now the worries are off for now, you know, and hopefully there'll be some more good news later on in the day and um, we'll be all right. But I feel also, later on, I don't feel like I can say anything about it because it's boasting, if you know what I mean. But it, it, I, I ain't trying to boast, so I've got to try and keep it quiet, really. Because everybody else is out of work. That's the, that's the bad thing about this. Can't share it, actually, at the moment. All right, OK, then. I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh. Right. Apparently... They phoned my brother-in-law up, Kevin, and he said, we want everyone there for quarter past seven. Trust me, everyone's going to want to be there. Bring your coats. Bring your winter coats, yeah. Let's get cracking. Come on, then. <laughs> It's buzzing now, I've got to say, it really is, it's, you know, it's, it's, what, it's all the hard work everyone's putting, you know, it's a release, you know, it, this is what it's all been, you know, about, this day. <laughs> My heart's going. <laughs> Yesterday, we ended the day with some progress in regards to the company putting something on the table. We weren't happy with that, so we continued for another day in negotiations with the company. I got a call about an hour ago. The offer they've put on the table now is redundancy in regards to your service for every year. 
then another 12 weeks on top of that, and then another 52 weeks on top of that. If we'd all gone home that day, if we'd all gone home, we wouldn't have got here. We have got what we wanted. I can't believe it. I didn't think it would be that good. It's brilliant. That is, that is, that's a result. That's a result. It makes it all worthwhile. They're going to give us a, a year's pay each. How much? Enough. <laughs> the following will mobilise. Means I've got a job, yeah. finally. Six months. The doll have paid for my new boat, which I will close modelling. We travel down on Saturday, fly out on Monday morning onto the rig itself. And after that, I don't know because I've never been on a rig. But it's a start, it's a job. What do you think about that getting a job? It's class. Why? Because we're going to get loads more money and. Oh, it's just class. I know, but you haven't even asked for anything, have you, since we've been skinned? Mm -hmm. I've got an IOU in your t money box for £12, haven't I? I can't wait to give you that. Do you want it? <laughs> you sure? Uh... The mortgage people have phoned up and tell them I'll get paid. Get paid. In two weeks' time. The debt people tell them I'll pay two months when I get back. It's hard, it. Some, I said that something's got to go wrong. This week's gone too good. Far too good. You maybe get on the train and your foot will slip and pull your leg off or something like that. Now he hasn't had a job for that long. He, when now he has got a job, then I don't really think I'm going to miss him so much because I know it'll bring be better things back. The excitement of going away and the joy of getting the job is offset with, I'm really going to miss the kids. <laughs> Mwah. Give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> right, see you later. I'll see you in the fortnight. Bye. 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 Have fun. Because Dad hasn't had a job for quite long, like all those people who hasn't got a job now, I, quite, I feel quite sorry for them. Uh, now Dad's got a job, I don't really think the recession's over because it's not the whole world, is it? It's no, so. You do jobs for money and other reasons for like help esteem and uh, self esteem and stuff. So it's quite. I'd like a job. <laughs> And they saw him on the bridge With his head in both his hands No one wanted to startle him Cause it was a long way to land Tell you.